Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL training session with Learn at No Star. Today we are going to write a SQL query to find the start or end day of the week and then using that query we are going to find out the previous or the next day of the week. So any day of the week like a certain day like a Monday or a Tuesday or any day of the week. So let's get started. So for this example, I'm just going to first declare a variable that can contain the value of a particular date. So we can calculate the start and end of the week based on the current date or it could be any particular date. So I'm just going to simply declare a variable at date 1 of the data type date and let's just assign it any value from the current month of March itself. So I'm just going to say 2023035. So that is going to be my value of date 1. Now based on this value, I need to calculate the start of the week and the end of the week. So to do that, we have to use a date function called date part. So date part is a function that basically assigns a number 1 to 7 to each day of the week. So it could start from Sunday. So Sunday would be 1, then Monday would be 2 and so on till Saturday and Saturday would be 7. Now, what are these values assigned, which is the first day of the week, depends on a system variable called date first that would be set in your system or if you want to change it, you can set it also to any particular value that would define which would be the first day of the week. So the first day of the week should be Sunday or Saturday or Monday and so on. So for our case, let's just first simply check what is the value assigned to this particular date. So I'm just going to say select date part and the argument that we need to pass for the interval is going to be weekday. That is going to give us the number of the day for that particular week. I'm going to calculate this on my variable that we have just declared above. So I'm just going to quickly check what is the value assigned to this. So I can see that the value assigned to this is 1. Now I'm just going to quickly go to my calendar and see uh, which day is the 5th of March. So the 5th of March we can see actually fell on a Sunday. So the value assigned to Sunday is 1 and the value assigned to Saturday would be 7. So I'm just going to change it to 11 just to confirm this and then I'm just going to execute this and you can see that the output that we have got is 7. So let's change it back to 5th. Uh, let's put a middle date because 5th was the very first date. So we that would come as the start of the week. So let's put a date of 7 over here so that it falls in the middle of the week. Now that we know that what is the day that this particular date falls on. So I'm just going to execute it again and it says 3 is the date. 3 is the weekday. So now what is the logic that we're going to use? First of all, we are going to find out the end of the week. So end of the week means that there are seven days in the week. So how many more days to go till the seventh day? So if I am on the third day, so let's go back to the calendar and try to understand this. So here I am on the third day. How many more days are there for me to go till the seventh day? So because I know that the seventh day is the end of the week. So I need to find out. So if I consider 7 as a date, so 8, 9, 10 and 11. So 4 more days till we go on the 7th weekday. So how can we find this out? We can find this out by simply subtracting the weekday of the current day from 7. So if I do a 7 minus 3, I'm going to get 4. So 4 days to go till we reach the end of the week. So that is what we are going to do. We are just going to do here. A 7 minus this particular day and now to get the date for that particular day the end of the week I'm going to use another date function which is date add so I'm going to add this interval in terms of day so this is my interval I'm going to add these many days so these are the days four days to which date to the current date and that should give me the end day of the week so I'm just going to add this to my current date and this should give me the end of week. So now I'm just going to execute this whole thing again and it gives me 11th of March. So going back to our query 11th of March falls on the Saturday and that is the end day of the week. So simple logic to get the end day of the week. Now just pull this down. 
the next thing we need to do is to find the start of the week so similar logic we are going to use start of the week is the day one whenever is the day one we are on day three so what i'm going to calculate is how many days ahead we are already of one so how many days back do i need to go to for my weekday to be one so it is going to be two days so six and then go to five that is two days i have to go back by two days how can we find out that two days is simply one minus the current day so one minus three is going to give me two so i have to go back by two days now since here i have to go back by two days again i'm going to use the rate at function but to go back i have to have it in a negative i have to go back by negative number so that is because date add would uh, add the days i want to actually subtract the days so that number the interval that i'm going to subtract has to be a negative number so what i need to write is one minus the current date which is this date that we calculated and it is going to give me a negative number because 1 minus 3 is going to give me minus 2 which is it is going to take me back by 2 days and from which date I want to go back by 2 is the current date so at date 1 and this should be my start of week so here i should be getting my end of week and start of week if i run this query i get the start of week as the 5th of march and the end of week as the 11th of march which is correct so this is a simple query that we can use to get the start of the week and the end of the week